Don't you hate it when you fiddle and tweak and tinker with something on the computer and you stuff everything up? Well, this time I haven't, and I'm going to show you what I've done. Come on, nigga! Hey guys, just thought I'd do a video about something that I've discovered in the last couple of days about the uh, force feedback settings within iRacing. Um, Usually when I'm fiddling, and if you guys have been watching my channel over the last couple of years, or on Twitch, you'll notice my tweaking usually ends up to my demise. I end up stuffing everything completely. But I was having an issue with the two new open wheeler cars, the USF 2000 and the um, Indy Pro 2000, I think it's called. Indy Pro, Pro Mazda, PM18 whatever it's called, the new Pro Mazda. And I was finding that when I had, driving down a straight, um, this, when it was perfectly centred, there was a lot of vibration in the wheel and it was bugging me, just really bugging me. So what I was doing was going down the straight, but just having a little bit of angle on the wheel just to get rid of that vibration. And I, it might have been slowing me down. It might not have been. Either way, the feeling itself was terrible. And so I've done a little bit of research and I found, oops, I found that uh, the settings within iRacing um, for, that came standard with that particular car were wrong uh, for my setup. Uh, I'll quickly show you, I've got a Thrustmaster TX wheel and I have the F1 attachment. These are my settings. Uh, I have it at 900 degrees rotation and the gain settings, uh, overall strength at 90%. I always hear about stories about people who've blown their wheel and the last thing I want to do right now is blow my wheel. I use it every day and for a few hours on end, so I don't want to pop it. So it's down to 90%. But uh, the default settings for everything is 100% for constant, periodic, spring, and damper. Um, I've turned the damper all the way down. I figure what it, the damper is doing is you've got all of the forces and all of the information that the wheel's trying to give you, and it's damping it 100%. So instead of having one bit of information sent to you, it's dampening it, and... I don't want that. I want all the information. Give it to me. I want the whole lot. Give me the whole lot. I want to know what's going on on the on the asphalt, the ripple strip, the grass when I hit it, the cars when I hit it. I, I want to hear the feel the traction. I want to feel when the the tires are overheating. I want everything. So damping's all the way down, but that uh, that is my settings for in Thrustmaster. So we'll just go into a practice session. And there's a few things within iRacing, the force feedback, which I'd actually never paid attention to. I'd set the, I think it's called the, the strength or the forces. You've got, um, you when you calibrate the wheel, it sets a calibration based on the information you've given it when going left and right and centering and stuff. Um, but the other bits of information I've only paid attention to in the last couple of days. Hopefully this helps you. It's made such a difference to me. The wheel feels so buttery smooth. And I'm jumping into this particular car because I haven't changed it yet. And I'll show you what I mean by going down the straight. It is feral. <coughs> so there are a few things in there. The, there's the minimum force um, in the new Pro Mazda car when I was first found the setting it was at 24.5% and I've turned it right off I don't understand why that would be so high it might be a glitch something's gone on it could be a clash with my personal global settings but um, the other cars that I've tested since didn't have such a high minimum force so as it's going to load up we'll go to the options screen 
So the strength is really all I've touched. And then Lydia mode is the similar, the way I look at it is um, similar to dampening. So instead of having a full motion, it's the Lydia draws a line and gives you a, an estimated um, bit of information rather than exactly the way you want it. So uh, linear for me is off. Um, when I've calibrated the wheel, it went to 839 degrees. I've left that as it is. But look at that, 24.8%. That's incredible. And damping at 10%. And the wheel force, I've only just learned about this. Now it says down here, Set to the maximum force in Newton meal. Sorry, excuse me. I've had a few beers today. Set to the maximum force in Newton meters your wheel can produce to prevent the auto adjustment from being set too aggressively. This is most important on stronger direct drive wheels. It's not a direct drive wheel. This is a belt driven wheel. But I'm not telling iRacing in the settings the maximum newton meters that my wheel can take. So, how do you find that out? How do you find that out? First of all, let's go down onto the track and I'll show you what I mean. Pit lane speed limit is 56 we'll, we'll just kilometers jump out. per hour. The pit exit's clear. We're gonna go. I'm gonna go all the way around. We go up to a certain speed. <laughs> uh, I got disqualified for a practice session. Really? Come on, knuckers. You ever had that before? So while we're waiting for a new session, I guess we're gonna have to go into a completely new one. <laughs> so we'll withdraw out of that. I'm doing this live, it's unscripted. We're not gonna go into a race. Come on, knackers. <laughs> what an idiot. That one is me. We'll go to this Euro one because there's no one in it. I won't go backwards on the track. But whenever I wanted to go straight above a certain speed, and just before it kicked me out was the speed that it was going to go on, you just get this really irritating vibration. So the, the force, uh, the maximum Newton meter force number, uh, I found on a web page called edracing.com, something that I found on Google. And I'll leave a link in the description down below. And there's a big list. This is from February 2016. It's not exactly current, but my wheel's on there, the Thrustmaster TX. And my maximum Newton meter force is 3.9 Newton meters. Now standard out across all of the cars that I've checked so far was one. So, once again, I'm giving the iRacing settings the wrong information. And I don't know, I found I can draw quite a lot of information out of the wheel while I'm driving. I can, to an extent, feel when the tires are overheating and stuff like that. But it's not all the information that this wheel has the ability to give me. So let's go back into, the, into a session. Have a look at the Mr. Gnome. I can't believe I got disqualified. Pit lane speed limit is 56 kilometers per hour. Pit exit is clear. I'm getting really bad tearing today. So there's a straight on the back. Right. Where it should do it. I don't care about the graphics today. Let's straighten her up.
And now I've crashed it. Less well, definitely going to put vibration into the wheel. <laughs> uh, see if we can get rid of this tearing. The pit exit is clear. Push now. Ah, oh, that's a bit better. Mm, not really. So we'll just get around to the main straight. We'll try not to uh, spin over the crest. There's that vibration right there. Oh, I've got my Western Suburbs Stilettos on. Alright, now we've finally got a straight. And I'm getting this really awkward vibration when I go dead straight and from what are we up to week 5 or 6 in the season plus week 13 I was kind of just I was just tolerating it and I got sick of it so 3.9 let's set this to 3.9 go to 3.8 doesn't show 3.9 we're going to get rid of the minimum force. The minimum force is what was really doing the on center vibration. And then we'll take all the damping off as well. So it says uh, apply a friction damping effect to the wheel that adds a sense of weight. This has the most benefit on gear driven wheels. Belt driven wheels will already have plenty of friction and direct drive wheels usually have an internal friction effect already enabled. Get rid of it. Just get rid of it. I'll leave every single car that I drive has a different um, strength factor that I apply according to feel. Like the Radical, for example, I want it to to grab me, there, and um, I want to know that I'm in something quite serious. Where the Skippies, I like to be a little bit um, less strength and a little bit more playful, so you can do your uppy locks and stuff. So that's, that's the settings I do. So we'll jump back in with brand new settings. And I haven't ch touched anything in Thrustmaster. Oh, I, oh my God. Exit's clear. Push. Oh. I shouldn't be recording right now. Oh, this feels good. Buttery smooth. That on center, um, if, what's the word? Viciousness. It's not as, um, distinct the the center point of the car you have this real rubbery feel on center which gives you probably I'm just gonna throw a number out there it's probably 30% more feel on center so just those little uh, on center feelings oh man I don't want to spin it It's not about pace, it's about feel. And then I can actually let go of the wheel and drive completely straight without those vibrations. And uh, it, it's exciting. I've been driving simulators, well, my simulator for years. 10, 15 years I've been driving with a wheel and as of this week I have found something that just feels oh, butter and just those micro adjustments that I've always tried to make on centre actually mean something now. I'm not improvising. And I liken it to um, before I had my load cell pedals, I had the Thrustmaster T3P80. 
I had the Thrustmaster T three A pedals, uh, three PA. Um, uh, before that, I had the two pedal setup, uh, that came with the Thrustmaster T X, and I'm likening it to what I did back then because there was nothing pushing me, uh, resisting my foot on the brake pedal. Um, I was always measuring a percentage of braking, if that makes sense. Um, instead of having that resisting force where I could really push down on the brake, uh, with the old, old pedals, I was always measuring a percentage of braking to prevent locking up. Now, with the load cell, I could just jump on this thing and it's so hard to lock the wheels up. Uh, you get much more feel through the pedal. So that's what I'm likening this thing that I've found within iRacing. That, yeah... It's made a monster, monster difference. Time-wise, it comes down to you and your talent. Um, I'm not overly talented. I'm very passionate about my racing, but not necessarily talented. So, yeah, hopefully that helps you. Um, they're definitely things that I've really learned. The strength, play around with the strength according to the car. The wheel force. So you're setting the wheel force that you've got from either your manufacturer specifications or from this uh, website, edracing.com. If you've got a Logitech tw G29, set it to 2.1. Um, 920 to 2.2. There's Fanatec, Fanatec GT3, uh, the CSW. Um, he's also got stuff for direct drive. The AccuForce, uh, 8 to 13 newton meters, OSW wheels, 10 to 20. Depend it says, depending on the motor, i.e. how much money you've spent. So if you've bought the more expensive OSW, according to this web page, set it to 20. But if you've got the cheaper OSW, set it to 10. Bodnar, never heard of it. Rumored to be 16 mil. Um, but I'm sure your manufacturer will have somewhere uh, for your uh, specifications, newton meter wise, uh, the capacity of your wheel. Thanks to everyone who watched this far into the video. It's been a bit of a babble fest, but I'm really excited to learn these new things within iRacing and looking forward to seeing where it's come and actually looking back to see how long I put up with crappy settings. I think that is essentially what this video is about. So don't do it to yourself anymore. A couple of little tweaks and get that butter feel within the wheel that um yeah that we've all been looking for. Have a great day guys. Thumbs up if you liked it. Down if you didn't make sure you subscribe and come check me out on Twitch. Don't get disqualified in practice. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye.